Happy Monday, everybody. We're going to go through the studs. We're going to go through those stinkers and break down some of these injury things that happened over Sunday. How do they impact your team? As well as some of these situations that are occurring like the Kansas City Chiefs running backs. How do we think about it? What are we doing? Do not miss a single, single iota of today's show. Hey, Foot Clan, what's going on, everybody? Hope you had a good Sunday. Look, it's Monday morning, and for a lot of the people in the know, that means you've already downloaded the newest episode of the Spitballers podcast, our side pod, our side hustle, where we just have a good time. We, we go through ridiculous scenarios. We draft things like kitchen items and best movie snacks, and we just have a really, really good time. So whether you need a pick-me-up on a Monday morning or you just need that little extra boost of having a good time, shake away those Monday blues, check out the Spitballers podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the fan Tassie Footballers Podcast. I'm your host. For the moment, your host for the week, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Joined as always by my bestest buddy in the business, Jason Moore. It is so nice to know that if things happen, I don't have to host. Like, sure. You know, th there's comfort here being like, you better be prepared, Mike. And I don't got to be prepared. Now, what you don't realize about that is, no, I don't. Oh, excellent. This is going to be a fantastic show. I just say, hey, Brooks, hit the record button. Let's do a show. The The big, beautiful bear, he is here. Jay Grizz <gasps> holding it down. Missing his Chicago Bears this week. I'm sorry, Jay Grizz. They will be back. Welcome in, one and all, to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. It is Monday. Oh, my goodness. Jason, do you know what we do on Monday? I think we have a little bit of fun day. Prepare to get sophisticated. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> yes. It's Monday pun day, so we reach out to the Foot Clan on the social medias, and they let us know by twisting one's name whether they had a positive or a negative effect on their fantasy football team. Let's yes. see if we can guess who did what. Yes, let's. How about Jared Goffel? <laughs> That's a pretty solid one. Uh... Cooper Cup half empty. Oh, uh, yep. yep. Malcolm, if it's brown, flush it down. Oh, very sophisticated. Very <laughs> sophisticated. You don't leave the brown <laughs> in the bowl. We got <laughs> the, the violins are getting out of control. We got pooped in his big Boyd pants. Ah, oh, and and also poo poo Smith dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> it's all poop. <laughs> Where does dumpster come from? I love it. I mean, it's, I don't blame Poo Poo here at no. all. But it's a good name. We got, uh, oh, we got a combo here because we got a Merry Digsmas and then a Terry Christmas. Oh, or maybe a Terry Digsmas. To yes. You. Yes. Smiles Sanders, Melvin Snoredun. <laughs> that's, that's bad. Oh, man. Noah can't. It brought the fire this week, Jason. Yeah, and and I would say that nine out of ten were Jared Barf. Yeah, or just d diff Jared Jared Goff my team. <laughs> <laughs> it look it was not good for Jared Goff. Wow, that I mean, we're gonna talk about the stinkers of the week here yes. today. We will get into it, but <clears throat> goodness gracious. You need some odor eaters on that guy. An unlimited industrial supply for that. Welcome to the show. If you are listening to the podcast and you want to see the beautiful people of this show, you can follow us on YouTube at youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Follow us on the IG. Look, we're hip. We're putting out cool content on the gram. You can follow that Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers or you want to follow the personals our twitter handles are also our ig handles 
I am at FF Hitman. Jason is at Jason FFL. The podcast, if you need some last second help, is the fantasy footballers dot com. And and you get extra things there. Like perfect example this last week. We didn't get into Hunter Henry. The Hunter Henry news was coming out very late into the week. But I was, you know, we we're all over that on socials, telling people, hey, right. if you're struggling for a tight end, go pick up Hunter Henry. You know, you don't want to miss out on that. Very fair. Well, if there's nothing else, Jay, we'll just get right into the rewind. Weekly rewind. First, the injury news: Amari Cooper was diagnosed yesterday with a thigh bruise, says a source, which can be horribly painful. It knocked him out of the game. Everything you're hearing about is just how much pain he's in. And, you know, th this is similar to the Todd Gurley situation. But, thankfully, it's not structural. There's no problems limiting him from, uh, you know, this isn't a long-term injury at all. So, this right. should be fine. James Conner, running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He suffered a quad injury in the fourth quarter. He missed some time. Tomorrow we'll be talking waivers, but just a sneak preview. To me... I don't think James Conner is out, but Benny Snell, he might be my number one priority grab really? of the week because James Conner now has missed time in a game because of an injury. He returned, but three separate injuries already for James Conner. It I, feels like we're on a ticking time clock where it's just a matter of time before Conner's going to miss some games. Yeah, I think the phrase you're looking for is a ticking time bomb. Yeah. A ticking time clock is just a clock. Well, but it, no, not all clocks tick, Jason. Okay, all right. Digital digital clocks are fine, but I'm going to point that out. There's uh, also analog clocks that are silent. I do think that James Conner could have came back in the game. Um, you saw him dancing around on the sideline. They were up by so much. And and this that play, though, oh, my goodness. Oh, where he got a full WWE body slam? The, oh, not that one. I'm talking the one that he got the, the, the oh, quad yes, injury yes. on. I literally hurt my quad watching that. <laughs> It was that painful. The Seahawks, oh, goodness. The Seahawks believe, they believe that Will Disley has torn his left Achilles tendon. If you, if you watch the play, it is a non-contact injury. He goes down. He just turns around in like the end his, zone. His leg exploded, and he falls to the ground. This is really unfortunate situation for a guy who had already come back from uh, about as a catastrophic injury as you can. If he indeed has an Achilles tear? He, he, he does. I mean, this is such an easy injury to diagnose. They knew it right off the bat. That means he's going to be out for the season, and this is a terrible injury to come back from, similar to the patella uh, injury he had. That being said, it gives you a little bit of – I mean, I, I feel so bad for the man, but it gives you confidence in the future. People are asking, do you hold on to Will Disley and Dynasty? Yes. I mean, assuming you're in a 30-man roster, tight ends are gross – I think he comes back next year and is involved. He's still, I mean, he was a, he's still a young guy. And I'll do this for you, Jason, because clearly it's the last time we're going to be able to do this. this oh. Season. We can still remember. Remember the big Montana as you want to. Streaming down the field. Catch the touchdowns. Yeah! Remember him as he once was, not as he currently is. For you, big Montana. Uh, keep being big and keep being Montana strong, my man. Recovery, we wish you well. Bron Speaking of a guy who just came back from tearing his Achilles, Broncos wide out Emmanuel Sanders. He hurt his knee and he did not finish the game. It appears uh, like it's not all that serious, but they're heading into a short week. How are you feeling on Manny Sanders? Uh, I think you're feeling poor on Manny Sanders based on fantasy production over the last couple weeks. You add in a bum knee, a short week. It's not great, but, you know, the team's not concerned. Don't believe it's serious. Not a long-term issue. Chris Thompson left with a foot injury. Oh, goodness, that guy. Um, and then Ian Rappaport confirms that Nikhil Harry is expected to resume practicing this week. It's this, this world of fantasy football we live in, Jason, is very funny because Nikhil Harry, wide receiver for the New England Patriots, for those of uninitiated. Rookie. He's, he was the like the number one pick in rookie drafts. Yeah, oh, yes. He, and we've totally forgot he exists. I mean, you got Terry McLaurin. You've got a Hollywood Brown. You have all these rookies breaking out. And the number one guy going in with Tom Brady is an afterthought, is forgotten. Are you 
I mean, it's too early to me to pick him up in any kind of a redraft league, and in Dynasty you already have him. Unless you have an IR spot. Like if you have an empty IR spot right now, I'm okay putting him on there. Yeah, but if he's coming back and practicing, then he's not going to be eligible. Well, he's he still will be for a while. Is my point. And you can if you can pick him up and stash him for free, why not? Marcus Mariota was benched for Ryan Tannehill in the third quarter. Something to monitor. Speaking of being benched, Josh Rosen was also benched for Fitz Magic, and they almost won that game. They did almost win, but however, Josh Rosen is still the starter. Well, yeah, because they almost won that game. They're like, oh, we're going back to Josh. (laughs) Josh Rosen is our starter moving forward. That was a little scary. We almost won. Uh, The Weekly Rewind and News. It's brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of fantasy football breaking news. Download the free app today. Speaking of Sleeper, people ask us for updates on the Sleeper Bowl, the league we are in with Juju Smith. Schuster, we dominated again. Happy to report. We beat Tim the Tat Man this yeah, week. Yeah, eat it, Tim. Take that, Tim. Timmy, as, as I call you. Timmy, the, I'm the I'm the Tat Man. Yeah, Tim. Mike the Tat Man. Yeah. Take that. Take your moniker. Like uh, but we beat him. We beat him down into the ground. Uh, so th- if there's not anything else, Jason, we'll get into the stud muffins. Do you have anything else to add for the news and notes? No, I just the only thing I would add is that from here on out this week, you are Mike the Tat Man. I accept. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Couple of excellent starts, oh! starts of the week at the quarterback position. Matthew Ryan. Mm. Jason's start of the week. He was look, okay. Look, when you when you call for a start of the week for a player like Matt Ryan. That you're already going to start. It's because you're saying Matt Ryan has a, a high probability of ending up as the number one guy. And, and he did. Well, I mean, there's still a game tonight. So if Aaron Rodgers without Devontae, what are we talking about? Of course he's not going to overtake Matt Ryan. Considering that Matt Ryan threw for her on over 350 yards and four touchdowns, I do not believe anyone's going to get close. Lamar Jackson running like a like a beast yet again. 152 on the ground with a rushing touchdown. He gets Seattle next week. Deshaun Watson continues to dominate for fantasy football. Russell, Kyler Murray, he was my start of the week. 340 passing yards for Kyler Murray. Three touchdowns as well. This time he did it through the air on the ground. He was only 11 for 32. It's a nice little baseline to have those 30 rushing yards. Where are you season long for Kyler Murray, Jason? He gets the Giants next week. He's the quarterback seven on the season. Does Kyler Murray end up? as a top five quarterback at the end of the year. Yeah, he does end up as a top five quarterback. Now, we're being a little bit skewed here from the the Falcons matchup. It's not always going to be this good, but this is a guy who is already basically a top ten quarterback while not throwing touchdowns. Do you remember early in the offseason we were talking about some of the, the Vegas props, and I think Fandle had a prop on Kyler Murray's rookie passing yards at 3,100 yards, and we're like, oh my goodness, yes. that's got it. you got to go over on that. Yeah. Like, I had him down for 3,800. Currently, he is on pace for 4,437 yards as a rookie. The issue has been touchdowns, even with the three-touchdown game, since he hasn't been throwing any 19. But I, I look, if they can figure out some of the red zone issues and convert field goals into touchdowns, he's going to be a monster. It's going to be tough when – Look, it, it's our home team, so we gotta we gotta say it like it is. Coward Kingsbury, oh. some of those play calls on fourth down that that dude needs to forget fourth down. I, when when we were on third down, there's seven seconds left. We're on like uh, the, yes. the five yard line. Now nah, you should you got to kick. You got to take the points. That's what Booger would say. Oh, thank you, Booger McFarland. <laughs> no, you've got plenty of time to take a shot at the end zone. Kyler should have had four touchdowns. Also having great weeks at the quarterback position, Brady Wentz and Spleen Darnold. Oh. Sam the Spleen with his extra padding over his allegedly recovered Spleen. First game back. No tough you know, the, matchup. The, the, yeah, the tough matchup. And uh, so, so scoop him up immediately because New England and Jacksonville are on the docket. Yes, I, I catch your sarcasm. It was laid on very thick. Mm-hmm. However, after these next two matchups – against New England and Jacksonville, which are death, and I don't want to play Sam Darnold. There's five games in a row where the New York Jets, I believe they play the Dolphins twice in that span. 
you they have, have my attention. <clears throat> the Jets are about to go on a, a tear, at least for fantasy purposes. Not about to, but you're saying they're going to eventually. In, yeah, in two weeks. Yes. Uh, to me, that's it's three weeks. A, in about two. Okay, I fine, three weeks. Sure, but three I, weeks. I stand by my time I will, reference. I will stream him in three weeks. So in, a, in about two, Jason, how many weeks am I allowed when I say he's about to? He's about to? I would say you've got that whole week buffer. So if it's the week after next, you could say he's about to. It's not it's not right. coming now, but it's about to. I apologize. I didn't know the the rules on it's, about to. It's all right, Mike, the tap man. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. At the running back position, James Connor. Woo-wee! Oh, another toot toot. He had an excellent game. It was my start of the week. He was the running back one, unless Aaron Jones or Carrion Johnson can overtake. Sure. The the bye week is coming at a great time for James Connor to recover. But with Jalen Samuels hurt, it was the James Conner show. And Devlin Hodges being highly allergic to throwing the ball more than 10 yards down the field. James Conner dominated seven receptions, 78 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown. Also had a rushing touchdown. Nick Chubb continues his dominance. 20 uh, attempts, over 120 yards on the ground. Added in a few receptions. The yards weren't great, but that PPR bump. Now, what happens here in a couple of weeks for Nick Chubb when he gets the the looming the return? looming Kareem Hunt? Are you, if you're a Nick Chubb owner, would you be willing to sell him right now? They're going on the buy, so maybe you are you willing to probably s- not sell while he's on a buy and about to get Kareem Hunt back based on the fact that he's been awesome, or the probably not because he's been awesome. A move I might be willing to make would be Nick Chubb for Le'Veon Bell. I've I mentioned the Jets' upcoming schedule. It's I'm telling you, it is really juicy, especially for Le'Veon Bell and Robbie Anderson. So if you're going to pivot to Lev Bell, who I think is about to go on a, a, a real tear for fantasy purposes, and you get him next week, yeah, you, it's not a great matchup, I mean, but, but Lev Bell is safe for volume. I've been saying for the last couple of weeks – that Lev Bell was a great buy candidate. He's a guy that you don't want to trade away unless mm. you get a mm. wonderful trade offer. Mm. Um, that you uh, then then you know like let's say just <laughs> hypothetically speaking here, Mike. Let's just say, we're getting into this. Yeah, we're gonna get into this. So let's <laughs> booklet. Ladies, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Th- this is our this is our job. This is our career in fantasy football. We are not above making a good old-fashioned mistake now yeah, and again. A little mistake or two might come this guy's <laughs> way. Now, let me just ask this question for the Foot Clan. If you were offered, you you send away, this this was last <laughs> week, you you send away Terry McLaurin and Lev Bell. Right. That's, good, that's Two good options. Yeah. I love Terry McLaurin. been saying to buy Lev Bell. I had those players. But would you send them away? For David Johnson and Cooper Cup, another. I mean, look, maybe maybe David Johnson I, I is a downgrade. Do that, yeah. Cooper Cup clearly an upgrade, even though maybe Terry well, McLaurin's pretty awesome. Terry McLaurin's awesome, and Goff was Goffle this week. But in general, you'd take the David Johnson, and, and you know, this was when David Johnson, you weren't sure he was going to play this week. There was right. all the back concerns. Well, I was made that offer. I accepted that offer. Uh, that was nice trade. Early. Thank you. Nice and trade. And then. And this is in our listener league, so they're listening. So then, uh, Sunday morning rolls around. I go to double check my roster, make sure everything's good, and I'm like, Duke Johnson. I don't remember having Duke Johnson. What? When did I pick him up? Wait, what did I do? Because the trade comes in as D Johnson, and yes, in little tiny text it says the team name, but I, I was, You're I was on the pot. I oh. was on the toilet. So Foot Clan. A, a poop stupor. The, the, yeah, you need to not accept trades on the toilet, okay? Do a little bit more digging. So I traded away left Pelletier McLaurin for Duke Johnson. <laughs> Talk about a real dukey situation, Mike the Tap Man. Oh, what an idiot you are. Uh, that Look, I got to stay true to my brand. Because David Johnson had, <laughs> had himself a game... Not necessarily efficient on the ground, 12 for 34 with a score, but 6 for 68 through the air doing David Johnson things. With a touchdown. With a touchdown. He is the running back five on the season. Not just a touchdown, but a touchdown that 
very few running backs could make in the NFL. I don't know right. how many wide receivers would be able – I mean, there's a still frame of the defender draped all over him, arm over his arms while the ball's falling down to the ground. David Johnson, absolutely incredible – uh, touchdown reception. Devonta Freeman got it done as you figured he would against Arizona on the ground and two receiving touchdowns. It's his like it's the first time he's been over 100 scrimmage yards since Week 14 of 2017. Arizona will do this for you. And let me just say, this would be a real nice welcome back treat for Saquon Barkley if he could get back this week and R face Arizona and be like, and Evan Ingram. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So if you can sell Devonta Freeman high off of this performance. Are you doing that, or are you buying in that he's he's getting utilized? Uh, if I could sell him high, I 22 would. 22 touches. I still don't buy in to Devonta Freeman rest of season. The one thing that I could see, I was at the game, uh, the, the the offensive line for Atlanta, they, they suck. And, yes, he was still fine against Arizona, but, you, you know, that's that's more on Arizona. It Coming up here, you got the Rams, you got Seattle, uh, you know, a, a bye week. The Saints who are great against the run. No, I'm selling high if I can. I just don't necessarily believe you can. Zeke had a solid game. He's quietly the running back seven on the season. Are you disappointed with Zeke so far, Jason? Because to me, it feels like he is. He he feels like he's out of that top three tier right now. It seems like he's real solid. He should be a top five guy, but uh, is top three really? Yeah, in the cards for him. Top three is in the cards. I mean, okay. this this last week, twenty eight carries. Um, Paul, the Pollard, you know, encroachment on his touches is not real over the last three weeks. Pollard has not really been involved. Uh, 28 carries for a hundred yards. You were really disappointed the previous two weeks. Um, you know, especially against the Packers. Uh, I can forgive him against the saints who have a good defense, but I mean, honestly, he could be a buy low to me. I still see Zeke as a as an absolute top three back. Has a rushing touchdown in five of six games. Could see a higher target volume if Amari Cooper with his thigh bruise, his very, very painful thigh bruise. It hurts so much. Chris Carson had a great game. Christian McCaffrey came through on the studs list with a line of 22 carries. Okay, if, oh, if Christian McCaffrey sounds... has 22 carries. Can I guess the yardage? You can. Okay. 22 carries probably breaks two or three. Let's carry the three. Okay, so he's going to end up with, a, let's say, 112 rushing yards. 22 I, carries. I would say that's a low guess. I'm trying to be conservative But here. you were actually over by about 100. <laughs> it was 22 for 31. Did have the rushing touchdown, four for 26 with a receiving touchdown. Unfortunately, if you've been riding the Christian McCaffrey train, as the Carolina Panthers have, He's on by this week. A couple honorable mentions. Miles Sanders getting it done through the air. It was only three targets, but three for 86 with a touchdown. With Darren Sproles out, Miles Sanders is more interesting to me. I know it was only three targets this week, but it seems like he will inherit that role. Corey Clement also going to miss some time. So that really cluttered backfield, it's down to Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders. If Sanders is going to get the passing work, very interesting. Carlos Hyde, they, look, the, the Texans were able to somewhat duplicate the blueprint by the Colts. I didn't think they would be able to do it, but here we are, 26 over a hundo and a score. Leonard, Leonard Fournette has been great for fantasy. He I mean, has. He's, he's still not that efficient, 20 carries, 72 yards, but the six targets, he is involved in – he's not a great pass-catching running back. He's really not. You watch him, and, and I, you, know, you don't see any kind of fluidity there. But they're like, I don't care. He's he's our pass catching back. We don't need you, TJ Yeldon. They got rid of him. And Fournette is just so safe. Yes, he is. He is very safe. Hasn't given you much, uh, as many ceiling games as you've hoped for. But those will be coming. He gets the Bengals. And Adrian Peterson had a fine game. If you picked him up, you're very happy. Twenty three for one hundred and eighteen. Shop him around everywhere you can, because not only do you not get the Dolphins, but now you get the Niners that shut down. Malcolm Brown, the Minnesota Vikings, the Buffalo Bills, and then a bye. You're getting nothing. You can drop Adrian Peterson My to me. My goodness. So, yeah. so trade him. Before we move into the wide receiver studs, I want to thank our sponsors. Quip, Jason, what actually makes a better toothbrush? Is it industrial, strength, power, multiple modes? Isn't I, I would say it's probably both. I would Neither. say I would oh. ask my dentist. 
Oh. And my dentist tells me it's less about the brush. It's more about how you use it. That's why you need Quip. I've got a Quip. You know, my the nice, wife's got a Quip. My the, kids have a Quip. The nice thing about when I got a Quip, I actually did learn more about how to brush because th they have that little thing in there. It's, it was very instructive. It's a fantastic product. It's got sensitive vibrations and a built-in timer. This is what we're talking about, a two-minute built-in timer, and it clips off every 30 seconds, lets you know, okay, switch. Yeah, just break your mouth into quadrants. Exactly. And you're going to be even cleaner than you could possibly imagine. And they will deliver you a new brush head every three months for clean bristles right on schedule. You don't have to worry about no nasty toothbrush. Don't think about it. Quip takes that problem away from your life. It's a sleek, intuitive design. It's simple to use. Comes with a travel cap that doubles as a mirror mount. I got mine right up on my mirror. It's out of the way. It's right there when I need it. Hit quick draw. Quick draw. Quip draw. Quip draw. Brush those teeth. Boom. Quip draw. Quip draw. <laughs> Quip starts at just $25. You'll get your first for a refill free at getquip.com slash footballers. This is a simple way to support the show and start brushing better. Go to getquip.com slash footballers and you get your first refill free. I mean, Quip Draw was right there, Mike the it Tat was. Man. I, w I left it for you. Thank you. I knew it was there. It, I totally. Also want to want to make sure that our – look, everyone here is Pristine Auction out here. They hear it every day. They're our studio sponsor, longtime friends. But I want to make sure that the Foot Clan uses Pristine Auction, knows exactly what they can do. I I've got a list of some things here that sold on Pristine Auction yesterday. Okay, a Tyreek Hill signed NFL football for 67 bucks. That went on auction. Stefan Diggs signed jersey yesterday, seventy-five bucks. These these are JSA certified authentic signatures. Le'Veon Bell signed jersey for the Jets, forty-nine dollars. These are gifts for yourself or for other people that you just can't go to Walmart and be like, I want to get something nice for them. No, pristine auction is amazing, and because it's an auction, hundreds of daily auctions every day. They've got something different, and, and you win it tonight. You Every night you can win these auctions. You don't pay unless you win the auction. Sign up at pristineauction.com. If, if you're new, you put in the uh, code BALLERS. You get $5 towards your first auction. You won't be believe what you can basically steal here for money, if and that's the, a thing. And the code BALLERS turns into dollars. Oh, man. It rhymes. Wide receivers who tore it up this week. Welcome back to the party, Mr. Stefan Diggs. I want to believe that this is more of an aberration. Like, we knew this was would be a good game. You can't run against the Eagles, and they want to run. Seven for 167 yards, three touchdowns, 11 targets, a doink in the face mask, as our producer has added in here. Which he actually... It was really funny. He kind of sucked. <laughs> like after his big two bombs, he hurt their team. He caused one of the, the one of the interceptions. Then he had an awful drop. It's like what you just did all your work and you checked out, Diggs. But I, I what I what I was saying is I want to believe that this is not this is a sell high, not something that you can necessarily just completely buy into because this was the type of matchup where you knew. This is good for the Vikings passing game. However, you look at their upcoming schedule. It's a delight. Detroit's not that great. I think they're going to try to run the ball. But the following two weeks, you get the Redskins and you get the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the, I mean, yeah, I, I think D Diggs is uh, certainly bouncing back. And we had Terry McLaurin. Scary Terry McLaurin, the F1. He was playing the Miami Dolphins. He was my start of the week. Four receptions. Only four. For a hundo and two touchdowns. If you played him, you're you're very, very happy. Terry McLaurin has the fourth most receiving yards through his first five games of his career, only behind Anquan Bolden, Randy Moss, and and the aforementioned Stephon Diggs. All right, we've been going back and forth talking about some of these guys. Trade Adrian Peterson, don't trade Stephon Diggs. And I don't think what you're I don't think you're gonna like what I have to say on Terry McLaurin. But I am I would be looking to trade him. Now, if you do, make sure you read the full first name of the player coming in, <laughs> not just D. Johnson, like an idiot. Just I don't think there's a lot of T. McLaurins in, in the league. No, I'm talking about who you get back for T. Oh, McLaurin. My I worry gotcha. with T. McLaurin at this point, Scary Terry, 
is I, I love him. He is dominant. He's been doing it in tough matchups, right? He had a great game against Chicago. That's all well and good, but that is when Jay Gruden was running the offense. You just said it. Four targets. He, no, four receptions. Okay, Seven four, targets. Four receptions. Seven targets is okay. But this is against the Miami Dolphins. This is a team that wants to run the ball almost to their detriment now. Yes, they won, but if anything, that gives them confidence to keep trying to run. But run. it won't work. Correct. This plan will not of running Adrian Peterson against San Francisco, Minnesota, Buffalo, it will not work. Yeah, but those names that you just brought up are what I want. I mean, the San Francisco defense looks as legit as it gets. Talk to Cooper Cup and Robert Woods and, you know, every pass catching option from this week that had to face him. Then Minnesota in Minnesota and, and possibly following that with the number one toughest matchup for wide receivers in Buffalo and then a bye week. Like, you can capitalize. Scary Terry could bring a lot right now, and I'm worried about his next month. It's, are you, are it's you fair. not? No, I'm I'm concerned about it, but he's really really good. So I'm I'm going to continue to play him, adjusting my expectations. I don't mind the sell high if you can really capitalize off of the name. Yeah, don't sell to sell. Sell yes. to capitalize. Sell to shop, shop, and if you can get a haul for him, then th that's great. I mean, you know, you you look at these guys and go, okay. Uh, scary Terry for the Redskins with Case Keenum is he going to end up with 16 touchdowns of course not but that's his pace which means the absence of those touchdowns would be coming it, it, it's not just touchdowns though I mean, he's been a yardage beast he's never been under 50 yards in his career he's look he's great I love him that's why I'm saying so high not just get rid of him Chris Godwin, 12 targets turned into 10 receptions and 151 yards. He did have a little bit of that uh, little bit of that stinky garbage there at the end of the game, but fantasy owners will take it. Tyreek Hill, welcome oh, back. Oh, he's the freak. Five for 80, two scores on 10 targets, 10 targets on limited play too. I mean, he was uh, – he had the – I think the fourth fewest snaps at the wide receiver position. The other guys were playing a lot, like Demarcus Robinson – and McCole Hardman, they just didn't do anything because as soon as Tyree Kill was in, that's who Patrick Mahomes went to. Do you Kurt, remember, did, did Rock and Jock, was that the one that had the hoop? That the was like, yeah, the bonus points? 20, 20 feet high Yeah, you're talking about the old school MTV show where it was celebrities versus athletes yes. and they had wacky rules. Dude, that was awesome. This show I, was, I loved it. Yeah, bring it back. But Tyree Kill could... We're, we're ready, by the way. Yes. Uh, MTV, Rock and Jock, you need people will, who are... Very, very important celebrities. Super important celebrities. I'm great at basketball. I'll break your ankles. I'd rather do the softball. Ooh, I've never swung a bat in my life. You've never ball. swung a bat? I mean, I would crush it. I'd be so good, but I just haven't done it yet. I believe I'd be awesome. We need to take you to the batting cage Ooh, for a challenge. Another video <laughs> coming your way. Um, my point was uh, Tyree Kill can dunk on that 20-foot hoop. Oh, for sure. Because the way he went up for that first touchdown and just levitated – while every other yeah. player went down with gravity and he stayed up there. That was crazy. Curtis Samuels, Jason sort of start of the week. Oh, my sort of st my secondary start of the week. The I regression hit four for 70 with a, with a score through the air and a, a weird rushing touchdown, but we will take it. Sure. He was, let, let's just say he was my, he was my uh, fan duel. Uh, yes, he was. Ballers on a budget pick. My Kool-Aid man start of the week, which was mocked relentlessly on this show, Alshon oh, Jeffrey. Yeah. He ended up with 10 for 76 and a touchdown. A very, very solid fantasy day. Every target seemed to be going his way. Because that's what happens. I don't know why you guys are so out on Alshon. Well, he, I, he's a target machine. I wasn't out on Alshon. Did I disparage him or something? Yeah. I, we can check the tape. Yeah, we Brooks might is, have to. Brooks is laughing because he knows I'm right. Welcome back, Robbie Anderson. Five for 125 and a score. A 92-yard touchdown will do that. You will show up. What's Like I talked about for the Jets, I'm very in on Robbie Anderson after these next two games. What sucks about this is now that he hit, you can't wait to get him off of the waiver wire. People will go after him. So if you're going to stash him, for this upcoming schedule, you're going to have to do it. <clears throat> Reminder that Golden Tate was somehow good against the New England Patriots. And he gets Arizona. Look, there was – I don't know who, who was watching the Monday Night Football game last night. 
I mean, probably a lot of you. But no one. I don't think anyone was watching the Monday Night Football game last night. If, oh, that's a good point because that was Sunday Night Football. Oh, oh, Brooks giving you the get bodied, Mike the Tap Man. You're right. Thank you. If you were watching the Sunday Night Football game at the, if you if you stuck with it towards the end, you missed the debut. Or if you if you didn't stick with it, you missed the debut of our good friend. Mm. You might know him, but we have some audio. And it is Jason Moore who was just activated off the practice squad who makes the catch. A little behind him, so he had to fall down. He'd gotten out in front. And so Moore makes his first career catch. Yeah, Congratulations, it's Jason. It's a moment that I'll never forget. My first reception from my good friend, uh, Philip Lip, as we call him. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was an absolutely great Old lips, moment. Lips Rivers. Lips Rivers. And uh, look, I mean, I told him, put me in. I'm ready. I go in. And now, look, and you I, produced. Didn't st- I didn't stop there. I got another target, got another reception. So the fact that we were watching all the games or the game together last night, our editor in chief, Kyle the Borgogan, made the trip to the FFB headquarters. We we're watching the game. A, a feller named Jason Moore catches a pass in the NFL. And your Twitter mentions oh my goodness. exploded. I don't think I have ever had as many. Like within one minute, there was probably 50 or 60 congratulations on my first reception. And I just want to say it meant a lot. <laughs> it meant a lot. Thank you. That was a big moment for me. If and Jason can do nothing and yet still receive adoration oh, for it. That's on brand. That's one of the best things in your life. Evans, Julian Edelman, and Odo Beckham had solid games. Odell Beckham, 6 for 101 on 11 targets. Are we hopeful? Well, yeah, you're hopeful. All right. You know, you have two choices are you gonna, Odell Beckham. Are, are you going to sell him? Am I going to sell Odell? Are you going to sell the hope? I mean, you might have to sell Odell because if you have him and you've been losing, um, you you have to, you know, assuming it's a redraft league, not, not, a, not a keeper or a dynasty league, then that's a situation where your record says you have to win now. Odell Beckham now showed his value where he's got the big name. He's coming off a good game. And if you need victories now, you got a bye week followed by the Patriots. Two weeks after that, Buffalo. Odell Beckham could score on anybody. But if you if you have him and you've been losing and you need victories, there is a window. At the tight end position, welcome back. Hunter Henry, eight for a hundo, two touchdowns, nine targets, has... Twice as many touchdowns as Travis Kelsey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He seems like he will be a big part of the offense moving forward to the detriment of those Austin Eckler dump-offs. He was looking downfield for Hunter Henry. Austin Hooper dominated as expected, 8 for 117 with a touchdown. Austin Hooper is crushing. He is crushing the dreams of all fantasy opponents. He's on pace for 112 receptions, almost 1,300 yards, and 8 <laughs> Eight touchdowns. He's not going to keep. <laughs> oh this my pace. goodness! I mean, you're you're certain. Uh, look, he's the real deal with this crappy uh, offensive line for Atlanta. They they are using him. He's running so many routes. I'm not saying Austin Hooper's going away. He's leveled up. He's a core part of this offense. It's bizarre when you watch Calvin Ridley. How often he's coming off the field, even though he's such a talented wide receiver. They. This is the team they want. So until Dan Quinn is fired, which might be in about, I don't know, 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, until there's a change at the coaching position for Atlanta, I think you have to assume you're going to get more of the same for Hooper, just not so easy because they don't get to play Arizona anymore this year. George Kittle, we finally hit 100 yards. He gets to take on Washington next week. And then Mark Andrews defying his injury status, coming through with big games, eight targets, Hit six for 99. He did have a fumble, but you were still happy with him overall. With the good, Jason, comes the bad, and prepare your nostrils. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Mm. Garf! (laughs) Oh, Garf. Jeer! We we had the one-year Garf-aversary. Yes. recently on social medias and he did not respond well maybe he didn't like the nickname so he was revolting or it was a rebellion of some sorts he was certainly revolting 
uh, he was he was putrid. I you know I had to go back and watch the game because I was I was at uh, I was at the Cardinals Falcons game. But while I was there, I'm tracking everything, watching a little bit of red zone. They weren't on it much, um, and and looking at the stats, and I'm just like. What is going on in Something this game? Something froze. We've seen the stats freeze. Yeah, the, the stat stats providers froze. Lock up. He's at 49 passing yards, and we're going into the third, late in the third quarter. Clearly, the stats have not caught up. But, I mean, I don't remember a word. Like, here's the deal. In real life, Jameis Winston had just as bad a game. Right? Five interceptions was horrific. But Goff was worse because he didn't do anything to help Yes, himself out. Jameis had 400 passing yards and a touchdown yeah. and a couple two pointers. He was actually okay for fantasy. Like Jared Goff in the beginning of the 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 game, you're you're crying tears, and then at the end, you're like, ah, he's he's okay. Joe Mixon, oh, my goodness, terrible game. Eight for ten on the ground, only three targets. Entering week six, Joe Mixon has been stuffed on over 28 percent of his rushing attempts that's the highest in the league the league average is 18.6 he is 10 points higher we talked about was this on i think it was on our Sirius xm show a player who is leveled down at least for fantasy purposes and you have to adjust joe mixon was drafted at that fringe rb1 you were very hopeful because he was able to defy the expectations in the offensive line last year not so much this year no this is a true level down situation and it you know, it's not all his fault. We're not saying that Joe Mixon himself has lost a step. I don't, I don't believe that. When you get him in space, he still looks very good. But this is similar to when Todd Gurley, going into his sophomore year, had major offensive line problems and couldn't get it going. And then the next year was great when they brought in Andrew Whitworth and uh, Sean McVay. Their offensive line is garbledy gook trash. And their passing game can't stop people from focusing on the run because AJ Green's been out, John Ross has been out. So if you're a defender going up against, you know, the the Bengals, you just have to stop Joe Mixon, and that's about it. And and it's they go, oh, this is really easy. Which Los Angeles Charger running back do you start, Melvin Gordon or Austin Eckler? The correct answer was neither. That you should have funny. played neither of them because they both stunk. Uh, the the passing usage of Austin Eckler was very surprising to me, uh, especially with the, that game script. It felt like he would get a few more dump offs, but he only managed four targets. They get to take on Tennessee next. Losing, they they lost their superstar center. Where are you at with with Melvin Gordon? I I tweeted this out early in the week uh, that I was really scared about Melvin Gordon. I would have been trying to trade him before this game. I don't think Melvin Gordon gets back into that upper, you know, the the top tier, e even the top five or six on a weekly basis. This is a back that now looks like he's in a timeshare. I mean, he's still getting the bulk of the work, but for an offense that's sputtering without their superstar center, the rest of their line isn't that good. And when you watch the game, and granted, uh, some credit definitely needs to go to the Steelers, their defense is much improved. They 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 look great from here on out. And but without Mike Pouncey, I mean we've seen it so many times, and it doesn't get enough credit. But we've talked about it. We've seen teams trade a star center from one team to another, and the running game miraculously goes from one team being great to the other team being right. great. The center makes a huge deal um, for some of these teams that want to run the ball. So I'm I'm very worried about Melvin Gordon. Speaking of a defense that has turned things around, Derrick Henry was held to 28 rushing yards on 15 attempts. Jay, this this team that got torched by Leonard Fournette when they played the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Broncos gave up nearly 270 rushing yards. Yeah, they lost Bradley Chubb. Yeah, and, and then, then they got good at stopping the run. And then not just not just good, but elite. They allowed 35 rushing yards to the Chargers, 39 rushing yards to the Titans. Over the first four weeks, they had not turned the uh, cr uh, created a turnover at all. Three each of the last two weeks. What's going on with this Denver Broncos defense? Well, coming into the year, you expected Denver to have a very good defense. They had great pieces, enough talent, and then you bring in a head coach who is widely considered one of the best defensive minds out there in Vic Fangio who orchestrated the Bears defense last year that was awesome. And then 
were like, what is going on? So I think the fact that they're meeting expectations now, just a couple weeks into the season, I think the truth is going to be in between these two. But if I had to, if I had to say they're a good D or a bad D, I would say they're a good defense. They because they've got the pieces, they've got the coaching. We'll find out next week because they get to play the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, they're a bad. And, de- they're a bad defense. And then the Indianapolis Colts. Just saying this, you got to beware of these defenses where you have the small sample size of just the first quarter of the season because a couple weeks ago, you are you were drooling. You were drooling looking at the matchup of the Denver Broncos. Maybe not so much anymore. Malcolm Brand, who had 40 rushing yards on the opening drive against San Francisco. Oh, what a great drive. He ended the game with 40 rushing yards and was very disappointing. Jordan Howard, 13 for 49. You knew he would struggle against Minnesota. He's despite how well he's been playing and how well he's been playing for fantasy football, he is still a touchdown dependent running back to me because he's not using the passing game. This can happen. 13 for 49 Dallas, Buffalo, Chicago upcoming for Jordan Howard. No, thank you. I, I told you yeah. on the show last week. Uh, he was a, he was definitely a trade high candidate for me. Someone I was not wanting to deal with over the next month to, to go back to Malcolm Brown. Sure. Malcolm Brown is probably my early start of the week for this upcoming week. If people are dropping Malcolm Brown... Because you're assuming that Todd Gurley will not play. Yeah, I th- I think Todd Gurley... I mean, they right now, what it's being said is that he has a chance to play in Week 7. This is really early to be using he has a chance <laughs> to play in Week 7. Now, medically speaking, he should he should be able to, but this is a pain thing. And so my my point is that I think that Malcolm Brown was the clear leader in volume, 11 carries to six. The Atlanta Falcons are not a scary defense, and I think I think there's a bounce back. I'm not worried about the long-term uh, you know, effects. Obviously, the Rams aren't the rushing team of the last two years. Their offensive line has gotten worse, but I do still believe Malcolm Brown in a plus matchup. What, what the Niners came out and showed the world is that they're not a plus matchup anywhere. And we knew they weren't a plus matchup, but you still wondered because they hadn't really faced anyone great. Was this just a matter of the schedule? And they said, nope, this Bosa kid, he's pretty good. The running backs for the Kansas City Chiefs, usually and like a long historic career of absolute fantasy gold at the running back position because head coach Andy Reid, goes with one guy as the predominant player. It is looking rough. It it looked like it was right back to that on track with that when Damian Williams came back last week from his injury, received 90 over 90% of the running back carries, was heavily involved, but this week was an absolute hodgepodge and Damian Williams two opportunities on the entire game, one carry for 6 yards, one target, one reception. Now that reception was a 14-yard touchdown, so he saved his fantasy day what's your heebie-jeebie level on the Kansas City Chiefs running backs right now? Yeah, I mean, it's got to be through the roof. You, who who should Who's going to get the, the main And when car- you GB through the roof. Oh, you get injured. You get hurt. You get hurt. You get a lot of uh, – you got to hire a roofer. Right. Because oh. you, you broke it. Hope you don't have a popcorn ceiling, bro. <laughs> get that asbestos oh, everywhere. Oh, that's – look. Um, I mean, who who has the most carries next week? For the Kansas City Chiefs. Because Shady McCoy had the most this week. He was right. eight for 44. So who who gets the most carries? You don't know. I don't know. Who gets the most targets out of the, out of the backfield? You don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Yeah, this has turned into a mess quickly and very, very unfortunate. You're, the- you're fine to keep these players and continue taking shots on them. But the same way that you've been taking a shot on Demarcus Robinson yeah. and these guys is like – you you might have to roll. I would rather roll with someone like that than a Benny Snell. That's like you hope gets you ten points, but maybe he gets a lot of work. I'd rather throw. A, I mean, obviously that's going very low. But say Royce Freeman. Royce Freeman is a guy that pretty much week in week out. If you're in half point He's scoring, about a ten point, he guy. gets you about ten points. That's okay. But I feel like I would rather take the shot on a Damian Williams who could come out and get two total touches. But could also one of those touches be an 80-yard touchdown? Wild, man. So It's a wild world. Yeah, the, the, the Rams wide receivers also disappointed. Cooper Cup and Brandon Cooks. Keenan Allen. Oh, now we have a few, multi- few disappointing games in a row. He was double-teamed for a lot 
of this game. The schedule is not great for him, though. Tennessee and Chicago up next. Juju Smith-Schuster, he is not only playing against defenders, he is also playing against his quarterback on his own team. His quarterback is winning and his, that fight. His quarterback is winning. Tyler Boyd did not come through. DJ Chark, we knew the, the matchup was going to be tough against Lattimore. It, it appears that Marshawn Lattimore got the better of DJ Chark. And really, that, that game was a, a slugfest if you were watching what was happening. It was tough for everybody. The afternoon games were trash for fantasy for like scoring, other than the Cardinals game. It seemed like every game was like three to six at halftime. Michael Gallup and Jarvis Landry returned to earth. DeAndre Hopkins, here we are again. We have going on about a month. Weekend of buy week low out. on DeAndre Hopkins, nine for fifty-five. Fifty. Oh my goodness. Oh goodness. Fifty-five. Oh. Thank Twelve you. targets turned into fifty-five yards for Hopkins. He was being used as a possession wide receiver. He's the wide receiver nineteen, so he's not totally and completely busted. But well, put it this way: where if where you are we? If you take out that week one and you look at the last well over a month, you know the last uh, five games, he's on pace for nine hundred and thirty-one yards. Now that's not a bad number for a wide receiver. But that is a terrible number yes. for DeAndre Hopkins. And during that span has not caught a touchdown. You say, is he continually a buy low? And I say, yes, of course. Like He is for me, too. He, he, I, I, it feels bad, but... He, so, like, he a, got 12 targets. His team is balling out. To truly buy low on someone. The, the thing that I that's not really talked about, to truly actually buy low on someone, you have to... You you will feel hesitancy inside of you, as otherwise it's not actually buying low on a player. You're buying a player who has been disappointing for a long period of time, and you aren't you aren't sure they're actually going to turn it around. Now you, with a player like DeAndre Hopkins, who's an elite level wide receiver and has an elite offense and elite quarterback, you can feel mostly confident. But it's it still feels bad. There's no way. You, almost no way you could trade for DeAndre Hopkins unless that uh, the person who has him on his team has not been just stung repeatedly like a hornet in his butt cheeks on then, a weekly basis. And then you're like, I, I need to get rid of these hornets in my butt cheeks <laughs> at that point. You don't want that. You ever anymore. had hornets in your undies? Oh, it's not a good experience. <laughs> so I speak I've heard. from no experience. At the tight end position, Gerald Everett, he went in for the dunk, and then Matumbo rejected him. He is not on fire with the rest of the Rams team, only nine receiving yards. If you played him as I did, you are highly disappointed. Now, real quick, just to throw these two names out, because I just want to discuss Keenan Allen and Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju, to me, is a guy I'm worried about from here on out. Yes. I'll play him in a great matchup. So he's going to the bye week. He comes back. He's got Miami. Oh, Fantastic. He's going to get even, a 70-yard touchdown. Look, like, even Devlin Hodges can get it done against Miami. Exactly. But if it's not a plus matchup, he's a guy that until – I mean, going to the bye, I assume coming out, he's not going to have Devlin Hodges. I assume – You think Mason will be back? Mason will be back after the bye. And is that really that much better? But it's not that much better. So, uh, you know, but uh, Keenan Allen, are you worried long-term? Are you buying low? I would be willing to buy low. This is – this is pretty much the history of Keenan Allen. When he goes off, it's a string. It's four games in a row where he just annihilates everyone, and then he pulls a Houdini and he vanishes for a little bit. It's weird. That's that's really what he's done for the last like five years. He has stretches where usually it's half the year and half the year. Right, but when he's on the stretch, it feels like he's going to go forever, and then you run into this, so I'm willing to – Go and get Keenan Allen. I think better days are ahead. How do we have OJ Howard on the on the stinkers of the week? <laughs> as, He's like, as you saying his his big boy pants are are not yeah he doesn't worth being on here anymore. I mean he's you know like when you go to the city dump, sure it stinks. Yes, but I'm not surprised. I'm not like oh my goodness, <laughs> did you smell that? No, you're at the city dump. <laughs> That's O.J. Howard. Gets <laughs> oh, no. I'm just saying. He's the city dump. He's the city dump at this point. And, uh, yeah, so, but Delaney Walker, that's disappointing. It is very disappointing. 
Those have been the stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. OJ Howard is going to need a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. We're going to have to send some Odor Eaters out here to a lot of these players. Jared Goff. Oof. We we're getting get you, the stink out. We're getting you a lot of odor eaters. <laughs> You're welcome. An update for the Monday Night Football that actually has not occurred yet, unlike the one I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was talking about last week. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. T.J. Hawkinson, he's in. He's cleared the protocol. Will we get hockey leaves? Will we get the hawk strap? We'll have to stay tuned to find out. Before we close the show, want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. We talked about him in the middle of the show, but a little reminder here, a Matt Ryan signed Atlanta Falcons alternate speed mini helmet that's very specific. It's very it's it's like a collectible. That well that's what Pristine offers, but just 61 bucks. Remember if you go to pristineauction.com, you make a new account, use the registration code ballers. Oh. Ballers turns into dollars. Whoa. I'm just looking at this sheet here. Allen Robinson signed jersey yesterday. <laughs> Did you call 30 Allen Robinson? Uh, maybe. Uh, but thirty six bucks, thirty six bucks for a signed Can Alan Robinson. Allen Robinson get some respect. I feel like he he signed it and decreased the value in the jersey. <laughs> like, oh, this has a smudge on it now. The speaking of the stink, the, the stink of Mitch Trubisky yeah. is so strong that even when Allen Robinson is balling out, he he still can't get any respect. Can this man get a quarterback? Yeah, look, Please. Bears fans and Jay Grizz, as we leave the show, I do just want to remind you that <gasps> Trubisky is terrible at quarterback. You may have forgotten because the may bye have week happened. Right. He was like, oh, it wasn't so bad this week. I mean, it's just Blake Bortles right into Mitch Trubisky. Like, come on. How did he throw six touchdowns in a game after I threw shade on him? I will never forgive Mitchell for that. Because that's just how things go. When All right. When that's, that's how you can stream a quarterback, Jason. All right. Because well, you see a bad matchup coming. On behalf of myself, Jay Grizz, and Mike the Tatman, we hope you have a great Monday Night Football game we'll see tonight. you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.